So there are a couple different ways of looking at pressure, but one useful way to look at it is the force per unit area. Usually we're talking about a force exerted by a fluid, and a fluid would always exert this force perpendicular to any surface that it is in contact with. But we can also talk about pressure for a mechanical system, like you'll see in the first example here. Talking about the pressure exerted at the bottom of someone's shoes as they stand flat on the ground. So first, let's get a definition of pressure. Again, that's the force per unit area. In other words, force spread out through how much area. Pressure is less if you take the same force and spread it out over more area. What are the units here? Force is newtons, area is square meters, so newtons per square meter. This gets a special name. It's called a Pascal, or a PA. There are other units that are more typical in, in the United States, for example. And what you'll notice, like on car tires, is that it, it gives you a pressure rating in pounds per square inch first. Again, that's a force spread out over some amount of area. And this is often abbreviated as a PSI. And our tires will also be stamped with a rating in Pascals. The conversion between these two units is that one PSI, a PSI is rather large compared to a Pascal. Um, perhaps more accurately, a Pascal is a very small unit of pressure. So 6,895 Pascal is one PSI. All right, let's look at our first example. We have an 85 kilogram person standing flat on both their feet. We're given the area of the soles of their shoes. There's two of these, so we're going to have a total area of 500 square centimeters. And we want to compute the pressure exerted at the bottom of their shoes and express our answer in Pascals and PSI. So we've got to get a person in here. And I could get way into the weeds on how hard their feet are pressing on the ground, in other words, what the force is. But of course, it's just equal to their weight. If you want the whole story, I'll do this in about five seconds. Gravity is pulling down on the person's center of mass. Normal force is pushing up on the person, but they're not accelerating, so the magnitude of that force is mg. And then invoking Newton's third law, if the floor pushes up this hard on the person, the person must push that hard back down on the floor. Therefore, the force down on the floor is mg. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, I could just intuitively say, okay, it's gonna, the force they exert is going to be equal to their weight. And I get 85 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And out of that, I get a total force of 833 newtons. Then I need to figure out the total area that this force is spread over. And that's how we're thinking about pressure. It's force per unit area. So I have 500 centimeters squared. And I need to do a conversion on this. And you want to avoid the most common mistake here, which would be to only convert one factor of centimeters. You've got to do it twice. So I'm going to take 100 centimeters per meter. And I'm going to square that conversion factor. In other words, I divide by 100 two times. And when I do this, I get 0 0.05 square meters. Finally, I take the force and I divide by the area. And I get 833 newtons divided by 0 0.05 square meters. This comes out to 16,700 pascals. And that's just further confirmation that pascals are very small units of pressure. If I want to convert to PSI, I would go 16,700 pascals times 1 PSI for every 6,895 pascals. And that comes out to 2.42 pounds per square inch, or PSI. In the second example, I'm asked to compute the inward force exerted by the outside air on a window with a given area. Given that the atmospheric pressure is 101.3 kilopascals, or 14.7 PSI. So this is an example of a fluid exerting a pressure. Uh, but we're solving for F here. We're trying to find the force exerted by that pressure over a given area. So I'm turning around the pressure equation, and I get force equals pressure times area. This is another thing that needs to be just really casual when you're dealing with fluid statics and fluid dynamics. You do it all the time. So pressure times area is equal to force. I'm going to start by getting this in newtons. So I have 101.3 kilopascals. So that's 101.3 times 10 to the third pascals times 0.5 square meters. And again, a pascal is a newton per square meter, so when I multiply these, I get newtons out of it. 
So this comes out to 50,700 newtons. And this time I was lazy about the unit conversion and I just looked it up on Google. So that turned out to be 11,400 pounds. Now, if you wanted to do that the long way, um, I suppose you could take that square meters and convert it to square inches and then use the PSI value for atmospheric pressure. All right, and this obviously begs a question. How can you put 11,400 pounds of force on just an ordinary window and have it not collapse? And let's look at a picture of it real quick. All right, that's the pressure created by all those little air molecules bouncing off of the glass. And the answer to why this doesn't collapse all, all the windows in the world <laughs> is that you have air on the inside of the house too, and the pressure on the inside of the house is approximately equal to the pressure on the outside. And so the net force due to the pressure is zero. But it is a pretty staggering fact. From this, we could conclude that if we sucked all the air out of the inside of a house, every window would feel tens of thousands of pounds of force on it. And obviously, the whole thing just gets crunched 